Volkswagen backed solid state battery startup QuantumScape has begun customer shipments of Alpha 2 prototype battery cells, meeting a goal set for 2024. The Alpha 2 prototypes represent a significant milestone on the path to delivering QSE5, QuantumScape's first planned commercial product. After shipping a zero prototypes to customers, QuantumScape entered the automotive qualification process in December 2022. The Alpha 2 prototypes incorporate many of the significant component improvements the company has made over the past year. Greetings and welcome back to our channel. If you find value in our content, please consider subscribing to stay updated with the latest news. We appreciate your support. The six-layer Alpha 2 prototype offers higher energy density compared to the earlier 24-layer A0 prototype. This is mainly due to cathodes with higher loading, that is, packed with more active material, and more efficient packaging that optimizes the materials and space within the cell. The packaging enhancements include tighter internal margins, thinner current collectors, and a sleeker design, all of which are crucial to the final product. As an intermediate step between the A0 and the planned QSE 5B0 prototypes for later this year, Alpha 2 cells possess the main functionality of the QSE 5. They provide an opportunity for customers to evaluate key performance parameters and prototype level reliability. While Alpha 2 prototypes are undergoing testing in customer labs, QuantumScape is working to incorporate these component level improvements into the planned QSE5 cells. The QSE5 cells will consist of 24 layers and utilize electrolyte separators produced using the faster Raptor equipment and process. The Alpha 2 shipments mark an important milestone on our path to commercialization, said Dr. Siva Savaram, President and CEO of QuantumScape. Customer feedback is crucial during the product development cycle as it offers insights into areas that require improvement and enhances collaboration. The sooner we can place new product iterations in customers' hands, the quicker we can move towards production. We are highly encouraged by the initial performance results of Alpha 2 and look forward to manufacturing the first QSE5 cells later this year. The improvements in energy and power densities demonstrated by the Alpha 2 prototypes suggest that QSE5 has the potential to redefine solid-state battery performance boundaries said Tim Holm, co-founder and CTO of QuantumScape. We are continuously advancing our anode-free solid-state battery in terms of performance and maturity through systematic execution of our milestones. The company plans to continue building and shipping Alpha 2 prototypes to automotive customers in the coming months while focusing on reliability, improvements and increasing production. QuantumScape's key goals for 2024 include scaling up the Raptor production process, initiating low-volume QSE5 prototype production, and preparing for high-volume production of its solid-state electrolyte separator using the Cobra equipment and process, which is slated to begin in 2025. QuantumScape outlined a compelling roadmap for scaling their solid-state battery technology in their Q4 Coin 23 earnings report. The company shipped their first a Aero prototype cells to customers in early 2023, receiving promising feedback from the Volkswagen Group. The battery completed 1,000 cycles with over 95% capacity retention indicating that the solid-state technology has the potential to enhance durability and battery life compared to the current fleet. 
management expects 2024 to be a pivotal year for QuantumScape, with plans to commence low-volume production of the QSE5 prototype and increase volumes in 2025. This aligns with Ford's F strategy to halt EV production in 2024 and start rolling out their next-generation electric fleet around 2026. If everything goes as planned, this could create significant momentum for the next wave of electric vehicle production. Comparing QuantumScape's ramp-up to Goldman Sachs's estimates, both seem to be in line with market expectations. Recently, the current administration introduced more lenient fuel economy standards, potentially leading to a slower ramp-up of the next generation of electric vehicles. I believe this could be a significant advantage for automotive OEMs, as consumers still prefer ICE and hybrid vehicles over current EV offerings. While I don't see the transition as a matter of if, but rather when, I expect the transition timeline to be extended until more reliable and affordable battery technology becomes available. Kelly Blue Book reported that the average cost of a new electric vehicle was approximately $10,000 higher than a traditional ICE vehicle. During their presentation at the recent Bank of America Global Automotive Summit, QuantumScape stated that they would not be targeting plug-in hybrid vehicles. While staying true to their roots in the BEV market, I believe this decision could limit near-term growth opportunities, as hybrid vehicles are currently more popular among consumers. As growth in electric vehicle sales has decelerated, traditional OEMs are delaying the launch dates for their new electric fleets, potentially reducing demand for new battery technology in the interim. I believe this could also introduce competitive pressures for QuantumScape as other battery manufacturers like KTL, with established supply chains, scale and OEM relationships, have time to enhance power density and efficiency for the next generation of fleets. Considering QuantumScape's two-year roadmap, I expect the company to face operational challenges given their current production stage. Once the technology is validated with their shipped prototypes, the company must secure contracts with OEMs at prices and volumes that enable scalability and profitability. Subsequently, the company needs to establish a supply chain to source the required quantities of metals for solid-state battery production and scale-up manufacturing. I anticipate feasibility to be a significant obstacle for the company without assistance from an external manufacturer, possibly necessitating a partnership or acquisition to achieve scalability. While speculative, I believe this argument holds merit, given that battery manufacturing capacity domestically is not on par with that in China. In addition to corporate competition, sourcing raw materials for electric vehicles presents significant geopolitical risks. Currently, China refines 89% of the world's neodymium and praseodymium, essential metals for EV magnets. Some domestic mining companies are either assessing mines for rare earth elements domestically or producing REEs offshore for domestic consumption. Two such firms are Ramaco Resources and Energy Fuels. Furthermore, ExxonMobil is expanding its lithium mining and processing operations in the US, with production expected to reach significant levels by 2027. If these firms succeed in their mineral sourcing endeavors, most of the demand for domestic EVs should be satisfied by domestic mineral production. The company is striving to commercialize a higher energy density EV battery, which could substantially alleviate Rangyang City. Today, Quantum's Cape announced the commencement of shipments of the initial trial version of a prototype battery cell to customers achieving one of its major goals for 2024.
Another objective is to initiate low-volume production of its first fully commercial product, the QSE5 battery cell. That concludes today's discussion. Please remember to like, comment, and share this content with fellow enthusiasts and forums where this information could be valuable. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you in our next episode.